Hi you guys and welcome to Yoga for Anxiety. This is a practice if you're feeling a little stressed, overwhelmed or anxious and it's a great way to calm the nervous system and soften back into the body. For this practice, you'll need a bolster or a few pillows stacked on top of each other. You can also use a rolled up yoga mat wrapped in a blanket or a towel. You'll also need a blanket or a towel and also a block. Books also work great for blocks. So we're gonna start off in Supta Baddha Konasana, reclined bowed angle, just to open into the chest and the shoulders and coming back into the breath. So set your bolster up like so, create a little bit of height underneath the head end of the bolster. And then for this one, I also like to take a little bit of padding under the sit bones. So one thing to be mindful of as well is just this angle of the lower spine. If your back isn't feeling super great today, you can always just come onto the back for corpse pose, Shavasana. So from here, you can start to extend through the legs, resting back onto the bolster. Let's take a few steady breaths. Really arriving on the mat. And notice how you have arrived to the mat here. As you relax into the legs, feel the hips grow heavy, the shoulders draw back and down. Become aware of any stress or tension that you may have accumulated throughout the day that you might be holding on to. And then reminding yourself or what we call re-mindfulness, reminding yourself to be mindful of that here. Consciously start to release. And maybe this anxiety that you've been feeling or that has presented is caused by something at work or maybe you have been triggered or trialed this week today but right here, let's start with a little interception, a little mindfulness. Let yourself know that this space is safe. And it's okay to dive a little deeper into whatever might arise and hopefully creates space for you to release. Let's start to draw your awareness to the breath here, just observing how it moves. Usually when we're anxious or overwhelmed, the breath is quite sharp and shallow into the upper chest, so it's more of this short breath. And if this is you, just take a moment to notice. I'm letting go of how things should be, if letting go of any labels of good or bad, and just notice. And then breath by breath, start to invite a little more space into the belly. So the key to yoga for anxiety is all about calming the nervous system, all about switching into this parasympathetic state, our relaxed response. So how can we rewire, retrain, reprogram the stress response? And the breath is such a powerful tool to do this. So time and time again throughout this practice, can you bring yourself back? Bring yourself back, bring yourself back to these deep belly breaths. Really focusing here on that inhale, feeling the navel rise, the sides broaden, the back expands. Long so, exhale out. And allow this to be a natural occurrence. What you might notice is a little bit of shakiness in the breath. That is okay. Take your time here. softened and settled here your option to keep this length in the legs or you might even start to bring the soles of the feet to connect for your full Supta Baddha Konasana opening into the hips here relaxing the knees outwards then you might come into it and decide nope not for you today that's cool go ahead and just extend back to the legs so this practice is really all about the feeling so letting go of any expectations here 
Good. And then we're going to start with a simple, deep, three-part breath count, the Loma Pranayama. So I'd like you to imagine your torso here in three equal parts. A lower part, a middle part, and an upper part. And we're going to be inhaling for two to the lower, inhaling for two to the middle, inhaling for two to the chest, and finding an even long exhale of six. So this will be a passive exhale. Keep this as soft as you can. Let's take a full breath in to synchronize. Inhale. Full breath out, exhale. Begin here as you inhale to the lower belly for one, two, pause. Inhale to the middle for one, two, pause. Inhale to the chest for one, two, pause. Long, slow, exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, lower belly, one, two, pause. Inhale, middle, one, two, pause. Inhale, chest, one, two, pause. Exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, lower belly, and continue moving with that same pace, that same rhythm with the Loma Pranayama. Focusing on really isolating the breath into those three equal parts. Finding that long, slow exhale out. Of course, at any time, if this breath becomes a little too much for you, go and return to those deep belly breaths. If you lose your place, you can always start over as well. Never too late to start over. We'll be here for one more minute. And let's take your last three rounds of breath. Make these your deepest yet. And after your third and final round, return the breathing to natural. And again, just take a moment to observe that flow and rhythm of the breath. How is it moving for you? Hopefully you're noticing a little more length, a little more space, especially with this exhale. And this is exactly what we're going for in this practice. Those long, deep inhales into the belly, but those long, passive exhales. Again, this is key for a vagal tone and switching into that parasympathetic state. When you're ready, let's place one hand to the belly, one hand right on the center of the chest to set a personal intention for this practice. Maybe it's something as simple as staying with the breath, being here now. Or maybe there's another deep personal intention that you would like to reaffirm here. Whatever that is, take a full breath in, seal it to the heart. Long breath out. Bring a little movement to the fingers, to the toes, gently help the knees together. You just take a little rock side to side here, releasing into the hips, especially if you had them, the knees out quite wide. Good, and when you're ready, start to make your way to a seat, and you can come up the spine or you might rock out to the side, whatever's more comfortable for you. Good, and then let's clear the mat. We'll find a little more movement here, so you can pop all your props off to the side. Find a comfortable seat. And here, let's bring the soles of the feet to connect again, Baddha Konasana, soften the shoulders down the back. If this is a little too much, you can always just place one foot in front of the other. I know you have these options. Let's soften the shoulders, relax the face, take a deep breath in, draw the shoulders to the ears here, really focus on squeezing and tightening these muscles. Good, exhale, release back and down. Two more breaths, inhale. Exhale. Last breath, inhale. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Good, exhale back and down. When you're ready, let's take a deep breath in, reach the fingertips high, exhale, folding forwards. Soften the shoulders, relax the face, and focus on these deep belly breaths here. Breathing into the back body, finding that long exhale out. 
feel it a few more breaths. And hopefully what you're noticing as you come to these breaths, as you come to these poses, is the mind, this monkey chatter starting to settle. If you find that it keeps wandering, that it keeps drifting off, just gently bringing it back, guiding it back. Be gentle with yourself here. Good, inhale, walk the hands back, lift the chest. And then let's make our way onto our knees. Find your child's pose. So again, take the knees wide here. A lot of hip openers today. Walk the hands forwards, soften down. If you have a block handy, you might like to take your block under the forehead if that feels good. Or you can also make a cushion with the hands. You can take a little wriggle into the hips and then start to arrive at a place of stillness. Bring yourself back to the breath time and time again. So we start to engage in this synaptic pruning, this mindfulness here. Last three steady breaths. Inhale, fill the belly. Long exhale out. And then let's reach your hands forwards here, spread the fingers wide. We'll find a few rounds of our uh, Balasana Cat Cow, so our child's pose Cat Cow. Let's take a deep inhale, roll the shoulder heads back, pull the heart forward, lift the gaze. Lengthen through the crown of the head, exhale, folding down, releasing. Two more breaths like that, inhale, chest lifts. And you can make this as gentle or as deep as you like. Again, really staying with the sensations of the body. Exhale, soften. Last breath, inhale. Exhale, release now. Good, inhale, let's walk the hands back towards the body here. Begin to draw the knees in alignment with the hips and let's tuck the toes under, really spread the plantar fascia at the bottom of the feet. You can even use your fingers to really spread those last few toes here. And then as we find a seat here, close down the eyes, soften the shoulders, interlace the fingers, or just take a few wrist rolls here. Good. and then take the backs of the hands to the thighs, fingertips facing back towards you, soften the shoulders, keep a slight bend in the elbows. You should feel a stretch down the forearm and into the wrist. Three deep breaths. So what we're doing in these poses is even though we're finding movement, we're finding stretches, we're still looking for somewhat of a hold so not quite as long as yin but longer than your usual gentle flow practice good inhale interlace the fingers this time let's take a roll the opposite way requires a little more a little more coordination good and then let's make our way to tabletop keep the toes tucked under here spread the fingers wide and finding our way into downward facing dog so push the sit bones to the sky release the head find one long line from the tip of the tailbone to the crown of the head and here first down dog for the day you can bend the knees you can shake into the head release the hips you might walk the dog take a little twist whatever is feeling good for you here and then let's take a deep breath in, make your way to the tips, very tips of the toes here. As you exhale, keeping that height in the hips, bend through the knees. Good, let's do that. Again, inhale, tip to the toes. And then as you exhale, let's soften the heels to the mat. Find two more rounds of that. Inhale, tips of the toes. Exhale, deep bend into the knees, lift the hips. Good, inhale, tips of the toes. Exhale, soften heels. Last round, your own pace, inhale. Exhale, see if you can slow it down. Okay, inhale. And exhale, good. Now on your next inhalation, let's float that right leg to the sky. 
And as you exhale, draw that right knee behind the right wrist. We'll set up for our sleeping pigeon pose. So begin to walk that left knee back. You might have to do this a few times to find a pose that's quite comfortable for you. And for this one, I definitely recommend a pillow or a folded blanket behind that or underneath that right sit bone. If a block is what's feeling good, go ahead and set it with a block or even a bolster as well. Know these options are here available to you. Um, ideally, this pose, we're trying to get the shin bone in line with the short edge of the mat. I would much rather you focus on the alignment, the squaring of the hips here. So just be mindful with one leg in front that the pelvis will be a little talked here. Let's try and draw that right hip back, left hip forward as much or as comfortable as possible. Take a deep breath in, lengthen through the crown of the head, and let's take the fingertips, sprinkle them wide to the outside of the mat. As you exhale, soften the chest down. And let's take two more breaths like that. Inhale, chest lifts. Exhale, soften. Last breath, inhale. Good, exhale, let's start to soften all the way to the mat, reach the hands forwards. Again, you can set yourself up with your bolster. You might start to fold over your bolster or pillows, use them as support, and know they're there for you. Or you can just make a cushion with the hands here. We're going for a little bit of a longer hold here. Really focus on the breath. Noticing how this pose is feeling for you. Whether it's a little bitter. What sensations are present, where they're present. Maybe you're someone that feels this stretch more into the outside of the hip, the external rotators. Or maybe it's more of the hip flexes and the iliac psoas. If you have come into this pose and decided, nope, it's just not for you today, you can also take this one on the back, which I'll quickly show you here. If you're in your pigeon, your sleeping pigeon, and you're feeling fine, go ahead and stay there. Otherwise, if you're needing a softer variation, come into the back, take the ankle across the thigh. So a really similar pose, just a little more gentle on the joints and the tissues. Good. Let's find another eight deep breaths here. Noticing where the mind is at. If it's wandered to a place in the past or a place in the future, bring yourself right back to the here and now, using this breath as your access point. Relax the jaw, soften the shoulders. Good, and then inhale, let's walk the hands back, round through the palms. Let's tuck the left toes under, walk that left knee forwards. Again, you can do this two or three times and then slide that right knee back. Take a little shimmy into the hips here. You can make circles with the hips and take a moment to release however it feels good for you. Usually extending through that right leg is gonna feel quite nice, maybe even taking it into more of a twist or drawing circles with the knee. Whatever feels right to you here, this is your practice. Good. When you're ready, let's make our way back to downward facing dog coming into the opposite side. Push the mat away, lift the sit bones to the sky. Take a deep breath in, lengthen through that left leg. And then exhale, draw that left knee behind the left wrist. Walk the right knee back, softening down. Again, take note of where the pelvis is. Can you draw that left hip back, right hip forwards? Walk the hands to the outside of the mat, sprinkle the fingers wide, inhale. Exhale. Two more breaths, inhale. Last breath, inhale, exhale, walk the hands forwards, find whatever pose works for you. Again, if you are coming onto the back for pigeon, reclined pigeon, what I know is to be what one of my teachers calls dead pigeon, you can also find that one here too. Focus on those steady breaths, notice how this side feels in comparison. 
whether this is your more dominant side or maybe it's a little more free than the opposite side. So really we're just looking for any sensations in the body, the physical, mental, emotional, energetic, to use as another way, another access point to be here now. And this is the difference between walking into a yoga class or coming home and practicing yoga or going to an aerobics class or working out at gym, for example. We start to work in this mindfulness, this interoception. So we're not just working on the body, we're working into the mind, all these layers of the being. Good, last few steady breaths. Make these your deepest yet. Gently walk the hands back, lift the chest. Walk that right knee forwards, tuck those right toes under. Take your time here to come out of this pose. Make your way back to your tabletop. And again, you can take a little shimmy, a little rock side to side if that feels good. Extend through that left leg or maybe even find a twist here. You can draw circles with the knee. And when you're ready, make your way all the way onto the back. Let's draw the knees into the chest here. So the hip should be feeling quite open after this sequence. Let's take a deep breath in, draw that right knee to the chest, release the left leg. Exhale, take it across the body. We're not gonna be here for long, just three steady breaths. If you hear any cracks or creaks in the spine, usually this is okay. So long as it's not coupled with pain, usually just nitrogen pops in the spine. You might shimmy the shoulders, create a little more space here. I'm feeling this deep internal massage of the abdominal organs. Also great for vagal tone here. So when we say vagal tone, it's more so related to the vagus nerve, a way to relax the body. Got this relaxation response. Good, inhale back to center. Release that right leg, draw the left knee to the chest. Deep breath in here. Exhale across the body, extend through that left arm. And really important in these twists to get those full benefits is to focus on that deep belly breath. So sending that way into the navel again and really feeling that constriction and can you stay with that find that long exhale out good two more breaths last breath inhale gently make your way back to center draw both knees into the chest take a little rock side to side massage that sacrum if there is anything else that is asking to be bent or stretched or twisted here, please take time to do that. Otherwise, let's set up for Shavasana, final pose. Take the legs wide, you can take the arms to the belly if that feels good or by the sides. There's really no right or wrong way to do Shavasana, it's all about how you're feeling and how you can practice self-care a little more how you can offer yourself nourishment a little more. So if anything comes to mind, feel free to set that up here. Draw the shoulder blades away from the ears. Let the belly go so feel it completely soften. And then find this organic flow of breath again. Relaxing the feet, the ankles, the calves, the thighs. Feel the pelvis grow heavy, every rib in the rib cage relax. The heart melt to the back, the brain melt into the skull, feeling everything soften here. And hopefully what you're feeling is a shift of energy. Maybe you have dispersed any nervous energy throughout the body, released it. 
hopefully you've softened into and decompress some of this tension and tightness. But also provided your mind with a new avenue, a new pathway then returning to old habits of ruminating or fixating. Staying here as long as you like. And when you're ready, gently wiggling the fingers, the toes, awakening the body, turning the head. Find your way to a comfortable seat, however that looks for you. Keeping the gaze soft, awareness inwards. And feeling a sense of ease throughout the body and mind. Taking this with you wherever you go today, this week allowing yourself to share this with others. From my heart to yours, namaste. I hope you enjoyed yoga for anxiety. If you're looking for more yoga and mindfulness for stress and anxiety, you can subscribe down below or attend a yoga for anxiety workshop with me around the world. Thanks guys.